You may think that I'm going to talk about salt today, but I'm not. So yesterday morning, I wanted to finish up some things on the sermon today, and I got to tell you that I just love this time of year. I went to my back porch. The sun was going up. Some leaves were falling from the tree. I had a hot cup of coffee, had the computer on the table, and I was as happy as I could possibly be. It was like 51 degrees, and it was perfect. And what made it even more perfect was that I knew that hockey season was coming. <laughs> I have to tell you that soon they'll take the ice and there'll be great rejoicing. You know, being raised and growing up in New England and Eastern Canada, I just naturally have been a Boston Bruins fan. My wife's from outside of Boston. That's, that's our thing, is the Bruins. And now I'm a New Albany Eagles fan. My son plays for the high school hockey team. And it's going to be a great year. It's going to be exciting. And people change at hockey season. My wife is normally a very calm, collected person. During hockey time, I'm afraid. I stay away. She changes. And I have to remind myself that I'm a priest when I go to my son's hockey games. Because some of the stuff that I might say under my breath, I shouldn't say. It's a great time. But you know what's funny is that as much of a Boston Bruins fan as I am, when I wear Boston Bruins stuff when I go home, nobody notices. Right? Nobody cares. When I walk around New England, I'm wearing the black and gold. Everybody's like, oh, he's just one of the guys on our team. How you doing, guy? I'm doing good. How are you? How's your family? How's your mom? Everything's fine. But can you imagine wearing a Boston Bruins jersey in Philadelphia? No, you can't, because no one does that. Or to wear a Boston Bruins jersey in New York? No, you can't, because no one does that. And especially in Montreal. Why? Because we take our teams really, really personally. Our colors, our team colors we represent matter to us. And the fact of the matter is, and especially in the high school level, when I'm at a high school hockey game, we really are all just a bunch of hockey fans. But that doesn't matter because what matters more is what separates us than what unites us. The fact that we can all love hockey doesn't matter. The fact that I think the Boston Bruins are the best hockey team ever since Bobby Orr and Phil Esposito and Michon and Lucic and all the guys that were great doesn't matter if you're a Philadelphia Flyers fan, even though we all love hockey. Why is it that the things that separate us define us more than the things that keep us together? We do the same thing politically. We do the same thing socially. We pick teams, we choose sides, and we can't meet in the middle on anything because it's more important that our side wins than we listen to each other. You know, I was in seminary, and I forgot this morning, Deacon Colleen was there. We had a guest rabbi come, and she told us a story. It was one of those stories that, you know, when you're in a meeting or you have a guest speaker, every once in a while you hear something and you just know you'll remember that forever. She talked about the victory angel and the listening angel. And she said that too often times when we have conversations, we listen to the victory angel. That's the angel that says it's more important to be right. It's more important to win the argument than it is to listen. And the listening angel is the one that says we may disagree. We may not see eye to eye. But I respect you as a human being and your dignity requires me to listen and to entertain your thoughts and your ideas. We're not very good at that, are we? It's more important to win. And we've all done it. I've done it. You know those arguments where you're not even listening because you're thinking about what you're going to say next? We've all done that. Because we've got to win. We've got to win the argument. And if you're Italian, you just yell louder to win the argument. <laughs> I won because nobody else can hear you anymore except for me. You know what I'm talking about, Reno. <laughs> That's what we do. But if we listen, what a difference it makes to realize what unites us 
rather than what separates us. And this is exactly what happened to Moses. Moses leads the Hebrews out of, out of Egypt, out of slavery. And I, I'm telling you, I promise that there is such a small difference between Jews and Italians, it's ridiculous. Because we're all the same, right? You know, back when we were in Egypt, we had cucumbers, we had garlic, and we had onions, and we had fish, and we had meat. Back when we were in slavery, we had all those wonderful vegetables. And now, what do we got? Manna. We've been eating manna forever. All we got is manna. Manna this, manna that. Let's go back to slavery. At least we had some fish and some garlic. And Moses was just done. I wonder if Moses thought, you know what? You're right. Let's go back. We'll go back to Pharaoh, and I'm going to tell Pharaoh, you can have them. I'm done. Take them all back. Go eat your leeks, go eat your garlic, and go back to slavery. He was completely fed up. So he goes to God and says, you got to help me out here. I'm ready to send him back to Egypt. So God says, go find 70 people and send them into the tent, and I will take some of the spirit that I've given to you, and I'll give it to them. So they go into this tent. And God does what he says he's going to do. Well, unfortunately, there's these two guys. They missed the text message, right? Their phone was on vibrator, on silent, and they didn't get the notice that there was a meeting at the tent. So they missed the meeting at the tent. They run out of the tent. And I, you, could, like, you could almost picture this, right? We missed it. We missed it. Now what are we going to do? I don't know. I, what are we going to do? I guess we can just act like everybody else. We'll just, God's still with us, so we're just going to do it. Okay, here we go. They did not have their certificate from the Moses School of Prophecy. And someone noticed. And so what did they do? Moses. Look at those two guys over there. They're prophesying. They're praying. They're doing all the things that we were allowed to do because we were in the tent. And they weren't in the tent. And Moses says, are you being jealous for me? Don't be jealous for me. This isn't about me. This isn't about Moses. This is about God. I wish everybody could prophesy the way they are. Are you kidding me right now? These two guys are serving God. Who cares if they were in the tent or not? And you'd think the people would get the message, but guess what happens later on? Jesus is faced with the same exact thing. Jesus is with his disciples. They got the Jesus disciple t-shirt, right? They're on the inner circle. They're in the, they're in the group. They're part of Jesus. There's a fan club, right? They got their jerseys on. Jesus disciple, 1 through 12. And they're walking around, and all of a sudden they see these guys casting out demons, praying for people. Like, oh, no, 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 no. You do not have the right shirt on. Because we got the Jesus Disciple shirt. I got a number on it. Who are you to do what you're doing? And once again, just like Moses, Jesus has to tell them, are you kidding me right now? What they are doing is in my name. They're healing. They're praying. They are doing exactly what I want them to do but we separate ourselves based on what team we play for instead of uniting ourselves in a common purpose of following Jesus Christ. Do you know that as of 2017, there are 34,000 denominations? Not churches, denominations. And 33,998 of them are wrong. Now, doesn't that just sound stupid? You can pick which two I think are right. <laughs> I mean, isn't that just crazy to think that out of all of those denominations, everybody else is wrong except for us? And I got to tell you something. We do a really good job here of being inclusive. We do a really good job here of loving and being welcoming. But just because we do a really good job doesn't mean we can't do better, right? It doesn't mean that we can't love more. It doesn't mean that we can't be more inclusive. It doesn't mean that we can't show Christ's mercy and grace even more than we do now. We can always go deeper with Jesus. And i got to tell you something, that as inclusive as the Episcopal Church is, I've heard some of our brothers and sisters and clergy alike complain and make fun of others like our Pentecostal sisters and brothers and make fun of how they preach or how they pray. 
I got to tell you something, folks. If I was sick, I know some Pentecostals that, buddy, they will get a hold of God. They will pray until God hears them. We had a funeral mass here last week, and there were people who were up in age who would kneel on this hard floor during mass in the presence of Christ in the Eucharist rather than stand up because it's that important to them. I can't tell them that they're wrong. And I can't tell them that we are the only ones that have the right way to follow Jesus. Because the fact of the matter is that we are all called to serve God. And I don't care if you're Lutheran. We dress so much better than they do. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> or if you're Methodist, or if you're Roman Catholic, or Orthodox, or Pentecostal, or fill in whatever blank you want it to be, the fact of the matter is that I thank God that we're not alone. I thank God that we don't have this mission of serving Jesus by ourselves. I thank God that there are those out there who do things the way they do them because that's what God has called them to do. And they may not have gone to the same seminary that I did. They may not have not been ordained in the same church that I've been ordained in. But thank God that they're out there. And I don't have to agree with everything that they do. I think we have a beautiful liturgy. I love our liturgy. I think it matters. I think our dogma and our doctrine matters. But that doesn't mean that somebody else, that their doctrine doesn't matter or their liturgy doesn't matter. Obviously, I think we're right. If I didn't think we were right, I wouldn't be one of us. But it doesn't make somebody else wrong. It means that in our conversations and in our relationships, I recognize, as our baptismal covenant says, the dignity and respect of every person, that they are serving Jesus just as much as I am, and how they do it matters. Can you imagine the world if we had our relationships that were based on recognizing that each other matters? that each other has a valid opinion, a valid place of where they're coming from, and what they say matters, and what they say has value, and then we see Christ in every human being, and what a difference the world would be in. That's what Jesus was telling them, and that's what Moses was telling the Hebrews. Don't you know that there's somebody greater than you? See, it's not about us. It's not about the priest, or the deacon, or the bishop. It's about serving Jesus. It's about loving and respecting the way Jesus taught us to. And sometimes, even in the church, we get wrapped up in this foolishness of, well, this is my job to do, and that's my job to do, and this is what my role is in the church. No one cares. Uh oh Sorry, that was the Boston guy in me coming out. No one cares. What we care about is, are we loving the way Jesus taught us to love and respecting each other as a valuable person that matters? Then, then we get a glimpse of the kingdom of heaven on earth. We get a glimpse of God's glory when we love and respect and hold each other in dignity. And how do we do it? We do it in a small, loving, kind way of saying we may be different, but you matter. Each one of you matter. Each one, no matter where you come from, matters. Whether you are a Republican or a Democrat, you matter, and no one should really care because we've all been paid for through the blood of Christ, and his mercy endures forever. So don't worry about what separates us. Hockey's coming, and I'll be wearing my Bruins jersey, and I'll be rooting for my son, and hopefully he doesn't let too many goals in the net this year. Yeah, you. <laughs> but what matters the most is what our passions are. Unite us and don't separate us. Because what can separate you from the love of God? 